We are AppTech from Hazard High School, and we thank you for your time. Okay. Uh, our company, AppTech, has figured out a way to make a long storage life and biodegradable battery using coal and regional products from uh, our central location in eastern Kentucky. And our uh, Knott County selected site, it, uh, it helps with uh, our it, it's an asset to our business because uh, it's right there, it's right off the highway, it has all the raw materials that we need. This is our site, as John Mike said, located off Highway 80. Um, it is very central, as in it's close to Pikeville, um, Prestonsburg, and areas to, to get shipments or whatever we need. Um, it was last active in 2005 by the Millers, uh, the owners were um, the Miller Brothers Company. And it is very centered, <coughs> and wildlife are there. It's very beautiful. And uh, we'll uh, and tech will use local resources to help the community using uh, water, aluminum, and charcoal. At the start of our project, we started out as a simple SCLP project when we decided that we wanted to We decided that we wanted to move larger and we decided to pre present it here at Cedar. Um, this is our team. I'm Morgan. I'm the team leader. I help with site development and um, I, I help with our site location and the model. I'm Andrew Williams. I'm the technical leader. I help develop the 3D model and the battery prototype. Um, I'm John Slover. Uh, did product research and uh, helped to build the battery and designing it. And uh... I'm Olivia Walker. I did team support, alternative presenter, and model design. Lexi cannot be with us due to illness today. These are some of our community partners that have we've spoke to and has took interest in our project. Dennis Smith used to work for the Kentucky Power Company and he's on our Board of Education. He's very interested in working with us and partnering to further our project. Uh, market analysis. Uh, there are some other companies working on stuff like the aluminum air battery, but they want to go in a different direction than we do. They want to do more like alkaline batteries, and we're just we're taking it in a completely different direction that's uh, patentable and uh, things that has a bright future. We are mainly targeting contracts for the military, large market corporations, emergency responders, outdoor enthusiasts, and the U.S. government operations. We also have talked to local emergency response teams about using our product. Uh, our financial strategy is to get grants, uh, community partnerships, and subsidized loans. From, and we're still open to uh, private investors. We uh, need to obtain like a, a million dollars for startup. And uh, we target to produce 500 and sell 500 units a day because we want to make as many as we can sell. And uh, it costs like $2.50 to make, and the starting price is $20. So we'd be making a profit off of the $17.50 extra. Oh, yeah. And uh, our, as you can see, we're going to be giving you our business plan. Uh, it has our unit material costs, like how much all the, uh, every product in our battery costs the, Buy, well, you can buy it by the pound or even by the ton for just $35 for the wood chip, for example. And then it has our sales productions for the first one to five years. And it has our uh, promotional cost and our fixed cost. Uh, we're projected to make $200,000 every month for the first year. 
and uh, the first year sales projections are a million and $22,000. And uh, return investments are $250,000 for the first year. Year three will reach 1.8 million. And by year five, we're projected to sell uh, 2,600,000, generating a profit of 1,630,358. And investors will be offered a 5% yearly uh, divided on their investment. You asked this is a realistic business opportunity. AmpTech thinks so. We are AmpTech and thank you for your time. So for our model, we have added a QR code to see a 3D model of our building, which was used by Vectorworks. Sorry, we're having some minor technical difficulties. So we made a 3D model of our building because we did a topography map to where it wouldn't really be visible, where it is kind of smaller. Um, I'm sorry for the <laughs> visual trouble, but um, our site would be located here and it was right off the road of um, 80 from Knott County. And there is water near, and the, also um, right over here is the Knott County ATV Ride and, so ride the Knott County somewhere. Trail Ride is right here, and we plan on getting all of our electricity and water from like right over in here. And uh, there's a lot of animals and uh, healthy, it, the environment's really healthy around our site. So Since 2005, um, wildlife has completely took over, and it is a very beautiful place, but the utilities are already necessary to us. Thank you. Um, one question, can you explain the difference between your battery and regular battery? Our battery is, it's not like regular Alphon battery. It is activated by putting water into it and it will last decades until you put the water into it and it will not activate it. So you do that. It will have a long shelf life. Yeah, yeah it has a longer, longer shelf life. How, how exactly does that work? How, what, what is the chemical reaction that causes the electricity? I guess I should say, because I assume it's chemical reaction. Well, we have charcoal, water, and our electrolyte. And what we do, you have the cell, and on the bottom of it, we have aluminum as the contact. And you pour the, chart, the electric light in first, and then put over hemp. Then after you put the hemp in, you put charcoal. And after you put the charcoal in, you just put another layer of hemp. Then you just keep adding the cells until you get the length of the battery you want. Each cell roughly produces 1.5 volts. So if you have multiple cells, you get more voltage. Yeah, the more cells you have, the more voltage you'll have. So if you essentially had 12 of these, you could start a car. And how long would it last once you... We're apply? still developing. Right now, we're working on about eight hours of battery life, once it's activated. Are there 
Yeah. No, you just yeah. have to replace them. You replace them. I was wondering on your prices, it costs, I think it said $250 to make one. Yeah. You're going to charge $20. Um, how did you come up with that? And do you think that's a good price to be competitive with the current pattern? Well, we really thought in the beginning it was just going to be like an 8 to like $7 item, but then as we got, as we continued it on, we realized how. Like we were gonna target it more as like an emergency based item. Like for, I think it was like in the third slide, it had the outdoors on it and like campers and hikers and everybody that likes to go out and enjoy like stuff like this, uh, they might need it in an emergency. And we're eventually gonna build on to where you could like just stick a USB port into it and then it just be like a portable charger or something. That was a, just a comment, that was an option to too. You talk about military, which is really interesting. Obviously, the defense budget is huge, so definitely a good pool to jump into. You guys can. Um, but yeah, disaster response. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be. A, I mean, that was something with decades long shelf life. I'm not talking about it. That could sit somewhere stored and then be brought out and needed. I think that's a. What well, made you come up with that kind of idea as far as a, a marketing? Well, uh, that's actually a funny story. We, uh, at the beginning of the school year, we were all in STLP together and we just started working on it there. And then uh, Mr. Hanshu asked us if we wanted to bring it into this and we just said, yeah, and it's been a really fun time getting here. Once, once the battery is activated, then it stays on for, it stays on. for eight hours, and then it's yeah. just possible. Yeah. yeah, and it's all biodegradable, so if you just throw it over the hillside, it isn't going to hurt anything. And the casing is made out of tin It is made out of a biodegradable plastic, out of a 3D printer. So, I guess the question I would have is if you're marketing this unique battery, because it is, you know, innovative and unique, um, the challenge most businesses and governments do low bid, right, when they, when they purchase and procure goods and services. And $20 would definitely not be a low bid for a battery, right, because we can go to just about any store and just one up for $5. Um, or less. So, what is, how, how would you, what is the competitive advantage? Because they're both disposable. I could see if this was rechargeable, where the $20 price point might be um, um, a better sales pitch, but I'm not sure how I can differentiate $20 disposable battery from one that I can pick up for $5, regardless of its uniqueness. Can you maybe help me rectify well, how that pricing would come into effect and how a consumer um, might overcome that, that price of entry barrier? Yeah. Well, in a regular Duracell battery, you can put them up for five years, then they'll start to crowd up, then you can't use them no more. But this, all you have to do is <coughs> unpeel this tape and add water, and it will activate. And in the meantime, it won't crowd up or mess up or anything. Okay, thank you. And one last question, where, where will they be manufactured? On your site? Yeah, on their site. Yes, yes. Yeah. And when manufacturing, like facility costs included in your budget? Yes, yes, ma'am. 